This is Democracy Watch. Okay, Mark, let's discuss Rudy Giuliani's really bad 80th birthday. So as you know, he was served legal notice of his indictment at his own birthday party after taunting the Arizona Attorney General on Twitter. He showed up in court, and while he and 10 others all pleaded not guilty to charges related to overturning the 2020 election, Rudy himself was ordered to post a $10,000 bond, either payable himself or through a bondsman, because he tried to avoid for weeks being served with a summons. So do you think he'd have had to post bond if he didn't decide to evade his legal notice. You know, I got to say, I'm starting to think Rudy may not be a good lawyer. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. was with him. I was with him all through the, you know, the period where he was dripping hair dye down his face. And I, I even thought the press conference in front of the, you know, the 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 lawn service with the crematorium and the the uh, the, the pornography porn shop. shop. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I even thought, OK, it was an unfortunate mistake for Seasons Hotel, for Seasons Landscaping. But I'm starting to think maybe he's not that good of a lawyer. Look, yeah. I don't know whether he would have had a post a bond. I kind of doubt it. Right. I mean, these are white collar cases. He has he has voluntarily surrendered himself in other instances. Um, he's recognizable. I'm sure, you know, the judge was probably none too pleased with the fact that he seemed to not only be avoiding service, but actually taunting the judicial process through that. So so, you know, I don't think he's doing himself any favors uh, in the way he is handling this. Uh, and, you know, it may be that he wants to hang up the, the, sh the his shingle as a lawyer and like let other people provide legal advice. Well, you know, as for that notice itself, do you think that he actually could have avoided being served if he didn't log on and start taunting uh, A.G. Mays online? Look, I, I, I think so. I mean, I think he wouldn't have avoided service forever. I mean, like, it's not like the state of Arizona wasn't going to find him. But but, you know, if you are going to be a fugitive, you don't want to be like taunting people when you're showing them where you are, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Did, you saw the movie The Fugitive. I know it's a few years back with Harrison Ford. Like, Harrison Ford wasn't, you know, I mean, he Harrison Ford got tripped up because the L made noise in the background and therefore they were able to figure around in Chicago. It, it, it wasn't throw a, it, it wasn't that he was hosting his live podcast. It wasn't. Yeah, he didn't throw a party <laughs> and like, you know, send a video of it to the FBI. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he had come online and basically said uh, issued issued this like this statement that sh that uh, A.G. Mays had until midnight to serve him. Was what he said true that he would have been able to avoid indictment if he wasn't served that evening? Almost nothing Rudy Giuliani says about Fair. the law is true. <laughs> I mean, like answer your own question. Yeah. Like Rudy Giuliani <laughs> provided a a legal analysis of. Of, of how he could avoid indictment yeah. that involved waiting a few weeks and then what, he gets out of jail free? No, look, yeah. there are rules involving how cases have to be served and, and the like, but even where a, something expires, they can be extended by judges. You know, if, if you could avoid being indicted by just hiding for a few weeks, yeah. you know, that would be quite the surprise. You wouldn't have America's Most Wanted that way. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like the, so, if, so no. If the, if the, um, if the indictments just <clears throat> if the indictments just vanish after a few days of just hiding out after yeah after like a yeah. month <laughs> right yeah. so no but but I I I I think he needs a good lawyer <laughs> yeah um, just as a but quick of course aside, he's not paying any of his lawyers right so and, and, where's he gonna find one. And we'll get into the money issues in, in just a moment. But first, as a quick aside, for those watching right now, if you want to see and hear more from Mark and support the invaluable work that he and his team are doing, please make sure to sign up for Democracy Docket. It's the free news outlet he founded to focus on everything voting elections. It's an amazing resource that I use on a daily basis. I'll put the link on this screen and also in the post description. Mark, you know, Rudy is a guy who himself was a prosecutor. That's, that's how he rose up the ranks here. What does it say that he's now effectively taunting other prosecutors looking to find him, looking to hold him accountable for his own crimes. Yeah, so I think a couple of things. First of all, it probably is further evidence he's lost his marbles, but it also shows that he's been infected by Trumpism through and through. And, and I know for many people out there in all seriousness, you're thinking, well, yeah, no kidding, he's been infected by Trumpism. He was Donald Trump's lawyer and participated in election denialism, continues to be an election denier, uh, uh, engaged in, uh, in absolutely despicable behavior towards election workers. But before that, remember, was, was, on, was involved in that nonsense... Uh, 
uh, effort to get Joe Biden uh, involving despicable characters uh, and the like. So, so yeah, he's probably lost his marble, but, 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 and had been infected by Trumpism. But, you know, one of the things that I think has been overlooked in the Trump trial that is true here for Rudy Giuliani is when you thumb your nose at the judicial system, Eventually, if you get convicted, it is the prosecutors who are going to be making recommendations on sentences. It is going to be the judges who are going to decide the sentences. And in all seriousness, you know, we can I can joke about about um, Rudy Giuliani, but in all seriousness, when he shows contemptuous behavior to the judicial system, more often than not, that comes back uh, in in a multiplier effect on the person who does that. And and if anyone would know that, it would be a former federal prosecutor like Rudy Giuliani. You know, it it, it is not going to end better for Rudy Giuliani in either the case in Arizona or elsewhere. Even in his civil cases, you know, judges don't like to see this kind of behavior. So, you know, I've, I've commented elsewhere that Donald Trump may very well have taunted himself from being convicted of a crime in New York to being convicted of a crime and sentenced to jail in New York by the way he has acted. And, and you know, Rudy Giuliani may be 80 years old, but he may very well be doing the same thing for himself here. He may be taunting himself from being convicted of these very serious crimes to being convicted and notwithstanding his age being sent to prison. Well, to that point then, can you actually speak on the other legal issues that Rudy is contending with right now? Oh, my God. He's got such a long list. He yeah, has how, much, been, how much time you got? I mean, right. Remember, he has been indicted on racketeering. I mean, racketeering. These are very these are among the most serious kinds of crimes there are or racketeering offenses. He's been indicted on racketeering and other felonies in Fulton County, Georgia. And that case is still going forward. Whatever else, may, you know, may be happening in that case that are sideshows, that are delay tactics, that case is going forward. And that judge is a no nonsense judge. You know, sometimes he's no nonsense in a way that makes people on one side or the other happy. But that judge, I don't think, is at all entertained by some of the theatrics um, we have seen. He has been ordered to pay $148 million uh, to two Georgia election officials who he defamed. That is a final judgment. That is not, there is nothing left in that other than to collect it. Um, he is a unindicted co-conspirator in the federal case uh, in D.C. And again, you know, remember, he's unindicted for now. Right. But it just, it know, just means we, like this, like this D.C. prosecution was built for speed. It just has Trump. But that doesn't so that doesn't mean that Jack Smith won't bring a second indictment with all of the unindicted co-conspirators after the Trump prosecution's done. You are 100 percent correct. And this is a point that I think was made very cogently by a lot of legal um, analysts early on after that Trump was after that indictment was returned that I think we all need to dust off, which is that if you wanted to get that case to trial quickly and you were Jack Smith, you you indict just one defendant. At this point, if it's not going to move quickly, they can supersede that indictment and add additional charges and additional right. defendants any day they want. And there is no guarantee that they are not going to do that where the timing you know, is no longer relevant or right. most likely not relevant uh, for the election. And then, of course, there is the Dominion voting case. So, you know, Rudy Giuliani may have once been a celebrated figure in American politics. He, he then became a disgraced figure in American politics. He is now, frankly, a bankrupt figure in American politics. But he's also an indicted figure in American politics. Probably, uh, if I had to bet, no, you know, no guarantees. But he may very well be a future convicted figure in American politics. Yeah. And on top of that, by the way, I would add he's contending with a harassment lawsuit by his former associate, Noel Dunphy. He's got a Smartmatic lawsuit, you know, hanging above his head. We, we're, we're waiting to see what happens on that front. Um, he owes, he owes, you know, well, I guess to that point then, how does somebody who owes $148 million in a defamation lawsuit, who owes, uh, I believe, the, by last count, $3 million to his lawyers, he owes a million dollars in unpaid taxes, probably, you know, to my earlier point, millions more for an impending Smartmatic or Dominion claim. How does he escape that hole? How does somebody, not not only just at his age, because you can be any age and not escape that hole, but how does somebody like him come out from the other side of that? Yeah, so he's not going to come out from the other side of it. I mean, the fact is people who may be cynical about the legal system uh, or who think that somehow there's a loophole, there's no loophole. I mean, the, a number of these, of these, um, 
of these judgments against him are non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. So he's right. going to owe that money. And, and you know, I, far be it for me to give Rudy Giuliani legal advice, but I, I, I worry for him um, that he, he, might, he has to be honest with the bankruptcy court. You know, if he there's been some issue with his accountants resigning and not filing the proper reports that have to be filed, you know, he he written, runs the risk of compounding the errors he has made by committing more errors with the courts. And what we saw with this with this effort, this this taunting in Arizona is a man who is not taking seriously the right. legal system that he frankly built his career and built his initial wealth on. And so he should know better. But, but he's not going to come out of the other end of this. He's not going to come out of the other end of the bankruptcy pr process. And if he hides assets, then he's going to combine, he's going to compound it. And I, I, I think he's probably not going to come out of the other end of the, the criminal process, certainly not with his law license. And I think he, you know, we'll see. He's presumed innocent, but it is very possible he winds up not leaving this with his liberty. Now, let's finish off with this. I want to step back a bit. Uh, could you talk about the broader fake election case in Arizona? How is that case proceeding? Who else has been indicted? And how do you think it'll play out in the months to come? So it's very interesting. You know, some of these fake electors cases have proceeded very narrowly, um, uh, it, like in Michigan, uh, in, in Washington, D.C., where the where Jack Smith didn't uh, did not indict anyone other than Donald Trump, uh, uh, at least for now. And then in other states like like Arizona and in Georgia, more broadly, where it is encompassed a more a broader set of characters. And certainly the Arizona fake electors scheme case is among the broadest. Right. If you look at who got included, we saw some of the repeat players in being indicted, but we also saw some some new figures in being indicted. And they include not just the fake electors, but also uh, political operatives and, and, and the lawyers who helped facilitate this fake elector scheme. And from everything I see uh, from the outside, and I am on the outside, um, it looks like the attorney general's case is very, very strong in, in Arizona. And it also looks like, unlike in Georgia, where maybe because it was such a serious racketeering case, they were looking to flip low-level people with relative bargains, you know, with, right. with relatively... Uh, 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 favorable plea deals. I'm not so sure that that Arizona case uh, that there's going to be the the easy going plea deals uh, that are uh, that were offered elsewhere. I think that whether it's Rudy Giuliani or some of the lawyers involved or, or certainly the fake electors, um, uh, there may be bigger legal consequences and penalties to be paid as that case moves forward. And just one more quick question on Arizona. If, for example, the attorney general loses her election, what happens to the ongoing prosecution? Look, first of all, let's be clear, you know, the attorney general was only first elected uh, in 2022. So there's plenty of time for her, for these prosecutions to take place. And I suspect they will uh, they'll be concluded before we wind up uh, with uh, with her reelection in, in 2026. But but, you know, once a case is indicted, the state, uh, the case moves forward, regardless of who the, the, the attorney general is, obviously. We don't take anything for granted now in the age of Trump and Trumpism that you could have politicians, you know, do extraordinary things, which would be quite an extraordinary thing for uh, an attorney general to come in in 2027, which is when uh, a new attorney general will come in and meddle with a case that was indicted in 2024. But I never put anything past uh, the MAGA Republicans now. But I suspect that case is going to be resolved. And if I were a criminal defendant in that case, I would not be counting on Chris Mays leaving <laughs> anytime soon as your solution. And by the way, Presidents can't issue pardons either to state cases. We talked a lot about that with the New York case that Donald Trump faces. We've talked about that a lot in terms of the Georgia racketeering case. But that is also true in the Arizona case. Uh, I, you know, uh, that case is going to go forward. And uh, I, I think those criminal defendants need to be prepared for, for whatever resolution uh, for them to live with. Well, we'll leave it there. Uh, again, for those watching right now, if you want to support the invaluable work that Mark and his team are doing, please sign up for Democracy Docket. I'll put the link on this screen and also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Mark Elias. This is Democracy Watch.